I think you should work with them, at least understand them, because if your client comes in and talks about it and you don't understand it, you're going to look stupid and you're you're not going to get anything out of it. So at least understand it and know how to have an educated conversation on it. Welcome to the Whistle Way Podcast. My name is Kyle Whistle, your host with eXp Realty in San Diego. And I'm Brian Kochi, Director of Marketing here at Whistle Realty Group. The goal of the show is to give you the tools, techniques, and tactics to go out there and crush it in your business. The way that we like to do that is to answer the questions that you have for us. So if you ever have a question you want to have answered on the show, you can always go to thewhistleway.com, thewhistleway.com. You can ask us questions on there, subscribe to the podcast and YouTube channel, join our referral network, email newsletter, and private Facebook group where I share a lot of tips and tricks, and get dialed in with a 50% discount on our Media Mare Mastermind Course, which is all about video content creation, where Brian and I share everything we've learned over the last eight years together in a tight little package. Um, and it's half off right now. So jump on that media, mayor, or I'm sorry, the whistleway.com. And uh, you can knock all of that out if you enjoy the show today. If you're listening on a podcast platform, hook us up with a review at the end of the episode. Those mean a lot to us. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the thumbs up button. And if you want more of our content, hit the little notification bell and the um, the subscribe button and then the little notification bell and YouTube will uh, take care of the rest. It's Monday. It's it's Monday and yeah. going on autopilot, huh? <laughs> <laughs> cool. Let's let's jump in, Brian. So one of the things as we were looking at uh, things to talk about today, we saw some news articles. Um, Open Door has actually been in the news recently a couple times over. Um, first, and I want to talk about the first one that I saw before we get into this, the one I want to spend most of the time on. But Open Door got in trouble with the FCC, is that right? They got fined, um, didn't they? FTC, I believe. That makes more sense. Yeah. Do you know anything about that? So I have not had a chance to read through everything. My understanding is that they got hit with a big fine because some of the uh, messaging and their marketing was uh, misleading to consumers to where they were. Uh, the claim was that they were making themselves out to be a uh, way to make more money on the sale of your home with less headaches when in reality they often weren't necessarily the most money they for sure solved a, a pain point of less headaches but uh, it sounds like the messaging that they were putting out was deemed to be a bit confusing to consumers or potentially misleading and ultimately they slapped them with a, I believe it was like $62 million Something fine. like that. I thought it was going to be 64, but it's somewhere right in there. Yeah. It's a pretty hefty fine. 60 plus million dollar fine. So that stings. Like that's a, that's tough. I think. Um, <laughs> As the director of marketing, you never want that to be uh, your <laughs> yeah, legacy. Yeah, Brian, you never get, don't get us hit with that fine. Uh, 64, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, it, you know, I think Open Door is actually a great company. I think they for sure solve a pain point in the industry. Like I have no issue with what they do. One of the things that I've learned being in this industry this long is that as agents, a lot of times we make a mistake assuming what a seller wants, that a seller wants to go to market, the seller wants the highest price and they want us to do all the marketing when in and reality- the seller wants the, the quickest time possible. That's not always the case. Yeah, that they want the quickest time. Like we make all these assumptions, but in reality, there's a lot of people who just don't want to deal with all the traditional things required to sell a home. They don't want to have to get the house ready. They don't want to have to go to the market. They don't want to have to have a bunch of showings or do open houses and sit around and wait for offers to come in. Like. There's a lot of things that, uh, you know, most people don't want to have to deal with. If, if they could just hit the magic button and they get a number and it, they can pick their close date and they could be out, like that's attractive for people. So I think. I mean, that's what they, I did for my house. Yeah. I mean, you sold to an iBuyer. Yeah. Um, so I think that they definitely, there's a, a time and a place for what they do. I think they just got in trouble because the messaging was a bit misleading um, and they probably won't make that mistake again. Yeah, from what I've heard, it's already been updated, but it, it, was something, it was something like, yeah, sell on your time for more money than whatever. And I well, I don't know exactly what it was, but yeah. So now... Yeah, I think if they could just make sure they keep their message on solving the pain point of showings, repairs, open houses, waiting for offers, not knowing when you're going to close, and all, that, all that uncertainty, because statistically, 
most statistics are made up, so we'll just make this one up on the fly. But <laughs> it's the numbers I've heard are roughly 60% of people in this world are high S's. And Brian being one of them, a high S likes uh, safety. They like stability. They like, you know, they don't want to have to deal with volatility and, and not knowing things. They like to know what's going to happen and when it's going to happen. And, you know, the an iBuyer option appeals to that. Like there's there's a time and a place. There's people who don't want to have to wait and not know what's going to happen. So um, I think that they have a product that appeals to 60-ish percent of the population and if they can just focus on how they solve that pain point, that's great. Um, financially, though, you know, if you've submitted an offer to Open Door, you know that it's not going to be full market value. They're in this; they're a for-profit organization. Like they're trying to make money, so they can't pay full market value on homes, um, and then ultimately turn around and sell them because then they would lose money. The reason why I actually went and sold to an iBuyer is because we were in we wanted this house. It was very unique. Um, it fell out of escrow and we wanted to get in there quickly. So we made sure that we would put in an offer. Um, at this point, we were utilizing Zillow uh, when they had their Zillow offers program. And we wanted to make sure that, hey, things were at this point, this was December of 2019. Zillow offers was a very, very strong offer. Um, so Kyle was able to convince the listing agent, hey, we've got this offer. It's guaranteed to close. And I think we closed within like, like we closed on, yeah, within a day or two. So it was really we were able to set our time frame up. So there was a lot of benefit that we got from, from doing that, which brings us into this kind of next iteration. So I talked about, I sold to Zillow offers yeah, and they don't exist anymore. Yep. Um, but now Zillow and open door partnered. Yeah. So Zillow ran Zillow offers. We were their broker partner in San Diego for a period of time, um, you know, working on their behalf. And um, they got to a point where they were buying massive amounts of homes and, I think they had some issues getting their algorithm dialed in on what number to offer on homes to where they were offering full market value, if not over full market value, charging virtually no fees uh, for a period of time there. Do you think there was just like a disgruntled em employee that like changed the algorithm before they left? They're like, peace, bro. <laughs> I don't know, but we, we, we caught on to the fact that they were paying crazy prices for homes and and we sold a ton of homes to them because at the end of the day our jobs to do what's best for our clients and we felt selling homes directly to them for most of them were 10 percent above the last model match comp we felt like that was probably what was best for our client not have to deal with any headaches and sell for 10 percent above the last comp so we sold a ton of homes to them yeah um but eventually they uh, kind of caught on their numbers started to come back to reality and then they ultimately just said screw this we're out and they um, pulled the plug on their Zillow offers program. So they've been running without an iBuyer program now for, I don't know, six, 12 months. I don't know how long it's been exactly. I know that it took some time to wind it down. So did they, sometime in the last 12 months, they wound it down. Did they close on a majority of the ones that they had under, under contract? It's or, my understanding they they stuck to it and closed on everything they'd committed to close on. Okay, and then good. they just you know wound it down. Um, cause I know when we first heard about it, we were worried like that they were going to uh, bail on yeah, contracts, but, but I don't think that happened to us. I don't think you can do that when you're their size. You can't bail on contracts. It's a bad PR move. Bad, bad, bad. Yeah. But luckily the market kept going up. So it probably helped cover them to where they didn't get burned too bad on that stuff. So they ultimately pulled a plug. They fired a good percentage of, or let go of, we won't say fired, but they had to let go of a, quite a few people. I, I think it was somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 to 30% of their staff they had to let go of because that's how many people they had working on that Zillow offers program. So they've been running without an iBuyer option for a while now. And uh, apparently they've been working behind the scenes to bring an iBuyer option back. But rather than doing it all in-house, which required a ton of staff, we worked with them. We know how much staff was involved. <laughs> um, it, it seemed overkill. Um, they decided rather than trying to bring the iBuyer thing back on our own, let's just partner with somebody who's already running the iBuyer thing. And now when somebody comes onto our website, we can offer them an iBuyer option, but we don't have to deal with any of it. It's not our money. It's no no risk to us. And so they decided to forge a partnership with Open Door. Um, now, the timing of announcing this couldn't have been worse. I mean, you literally had the news of Open Door getting slapped with a fat fine. And then within one week, you had the partnership announcement. Um, now, maybe that was intentional to try to like put something positive out there for Open Door right after the big negative. But then at the same time, you put the negative out there, and then it's like 
now this company this is misleading people and now you're partnering with them like oh, i don't ah oh, man it's a questionable timing i mean maybe somebody smarter than me <laughs> knows that this is a, a good move but i i'm not too sure man it's, that's why you got to be careful when scheduling out your facebook posts yeah uh, <laughs> they Holy probably had it cow. scheduled and it hit release and they go oh shit <laughs> yeah the, the timing is just very interesting um so to to partner with somebody like that right after that fine that's the way it looks right i'm sure that the partnership was in the works for oh yeah quite some time it just happened to be that that's when they you know inked the deal or whatever um so it's it's questionable timing i think for zillow i think it makes a lot of sense it, it eliminates a lot of the risk um it's partnering with a you know a model that's proven open door existed before zillow offers and um obviously still exist after zillow offers so it's it's partnering with somebody who's got it down and you don't have to take all that risk on so i i get why zillow's doing it i get why open door is doing it because it's a great lead source for them um so i i think it makes sense for both companies i think just the timing is the the part that caught a lot of people off guard so now they they do they partner or did zillow buy open door partner open door is worth a massive amount of money all right. Yeah, it was it's interesting. I'm I'm kind of surprised they did this. My thought when they did the iBuyer program themselves was that they were going to hire teams like ours to help them get established, get their foot in the door. And then my thought of what was going to happen was they were going to um take it completely in house and try and take the realtor out of it completely. Um I think probably with their experience with their iBuyer program and it's not success. Uh, I think maybe the idea was, hey, this is the future of real estate. Let's go here. And then they realized, hey, this is good for a portion of the population, not the whole population. Um, so how do you think this, what do you think this does with relationships with real estate agents? Yeah, I think now when a seller or a homeowner goes on Zillow, gets the value of their home, they'll have an option. They'll be prompted, hey, would you like to get an offer on your home? And I think the way that they're looking at it is um, obviously there's some sort of financial arrangement between Open Door and Zillow, and, and none of us are obviously privy to that, but there's clearly going to be some sort of a financial relationship there. So if somebody starts on Zillow and ends up selling their home to Open Door, I'm going to assume there's you know some financial gain in it for Zillow. Um, so that's good for them. And then if somebody doesn't, then they'll take that lead and they'll assign that out to an agent, whether it's through their flex program where they get a referral fee or through their um, market-based pricing where people are paying up front for the leads. I'm assuming they'll give that lead to one of their partners and they'll get paid that way as well. And, and I think part of what Zillow is looking at is it's it can use that as a, a lead generation tool to get more people to fill out forms so they can get the iBuyer offer. Because I don't remember what the number was, but statistically it was a very low percentage of people who actually accepted the iBuyer offer when they had Zillow offers. But Zillow smart in realizing like, let's just get all these people to request iBuyer offers. Most of them aren't gonna take it. The ones that do, cool, open door will pay us. And the ones that don't, we just got all these new leads in our system that we can then either sell to or give to realtors and get a referral fee and make money that way. So I think Zillow's looking at it as a lead generation opportunity um, I think, again, I think this is actually a really smart partnership um, on both ends. It lets Zillow stay focused on what they do is generate leads and and work with realtors to uh, monetize those leads. And it lets them stay focused and it lets Open Door, you know, do what they do and stay focused on being an iBuyer. But it just gave them a massive, massive lead source that they didn't have before. So I, you know, I know a lot of people want to knock this and say it's stupid. It's never going to work. But actually... My personal opinion, I think it's a, a good fit. Well, and Zilla has some experience with things that don't work, and it didn't crush them before. So if it doesn't, you know, yeah. who knows? One thing that that I heard when you were talking was you. Th there's probably going to be some sort of marketing or messaging to the Zilla leads, the new leads that come in, talking about this iBuyer program. What that tells me is we as real estate agents, I'm not a real estate agent, uh, but we need to have some alternatives. Zillow has, I think, done us a favor by priming the pump, saying, hey, do you want this? And they go, no, no, no. Just like when you walk into Best Buy, hey, can I help you? No, no, I'm looking. 
looking for something very specific that I'm going to have to ask you for later, but no, leave me alone, right? And so I'm curious if if you think that's going to help uh, real estate agents get more um, kind of eye buyer opportunities for themselves. I don't know about that, but I think it will create more seller opportunities for those that are working with Zillow. And the quality of those will go up because oh, they've for already... Oh, real estate agents working with Zillow. Yeah, because then that person, that lead has already explored the iBuyer option, decided it wasn't for them, and has instead decided like, hey, I'd rather talk to an agent about selling my home. So if anything, I think the, the quantity and quality of the leads that go to those working with Zillow is likely going to go up. I mean, that's... Am I... Doesn't that seem right? Like That makes sense. Um, I... What I'm also thinking about as we hear that, I think Zillow is going to, like I said, put in marketing and messaging. I think they're going to do a lot of work, spend a lot of time, money, and energy educating the public on this different way to sell your home. Whether or not they go through Zillow first, I do think it's important for us as real estate agent teams to have an iBuyer opportunity. So that way, once they hear about it, you don't have to educate them. But but a lot of times, I'm sure you've you've, you've talked to sellers and really realized this is definitely the way you want to go. Yeah. You know, it was your in-laws house and you don't want to deal with it. You just want a quick, easy sale. Like let's go. Um, I think they're going to probably do some messaging where then people are going to go, Oh, maybe I'll talk about that. And if you're doing a good job as an agent, you're touching base with your clients every quarter, every, every so often that way when they say, Oh yeah, I heard about this open door thing. You can say something along the lines of, Oh yeah, that's a great option. I also have this other option, which is better because X, Y, and Z. Or yes, we we have a very similar program that does that, um, and we like working with it because of this. And really, kind of take their marketing efforts and and filter them through your channels. Yeah, yeah. I think they'll also do a lot of direct marketing to all the people who've signed up on their website to check in on their home value. Now they'll. They send a message that says, hey, you want to get an offer on your home? And then now people like opt into that and that they became a lead that way. And then, yeah, like you're talking about as a realtor, you have to understand the iBuyer option and not just see it as a threat, but see it as an opportunity to partner. We probably sold, I would venture to guess, 30 homes or so in 21 to Zillow and Opendoor. Like we sold a lot of homes to them. And we would just meet with sellers and, and let sellers know that, hey, there's multiple options out there today. Option one is sell to this investor. Option B, that investor. Option C, go to market. And we would present those offers. We would add our commission onto the deal. Those Most of them say, hey, we'll pay this much money and, and here's our fee. And then you can add your commission on top. There's zero rule that says you can't do that. So we would just present, here's option A with investor A. Here's option B with investor B and, and here's option C, which is go to market. And, and we would let sellers pick and you would be surprised how often they would pick option A or B, even if those the net number was significantly lower than C. And so I think you should understand how to partner with these guys and, and open door. They're, they're always trying to find ways to work with realtors and they I've seen them run things where they'll pay you 1% and then depending on how many homes you've sold to them, they'll add in additional incentives um, for kind of like a loyalty thing. It's like go get 10 Froyos and your 11th one is free. Like they almost have a program like that where that, you actually make the, more that's money. That's a daily uh, thing for me. I get yeah. 11 Froyos. You make more day. money as you, you know, do more deals with them. So, um, yeah, I, I think any agent who just is like, Oh, F Zillow offers, F open door, F offer pad, F all these companies like, uh, F you, I think you're stupid. I think you should work with them, at least understand them because if your client comes in and, talks about it and you don't understand it, you're going to look stupid and you're, you're not going to get anything out of it. So at least understand it and know how to have an educated conversation on it. Excellent. Um, one thing before we go into our widget of the week, um, we do stream this, our podcast live in a couple of our Facebook groups, the whistle way and the be different Facebook group. Um, we had a question on right now, as we were going live asking, do you think more agents will sign up for uh, Zillow premiere because of this? Or do you think, that's not I think most agents are too stubborn to see the opportunity. I think most agents see this and see it as Zillow one more thing Zillow's doing against agents. Like so many people think Zillow's anti agents. Like, no, that Zillow knows that their number one source of income is agents. So they're not trying to burn agents. We've been partners with Zillow for since literally day one, over ten years. Um 
So I'm, I'm happy with the agents that think that way. Like keep thinking Zillow's against you. Um, and we'll keep partnering with them and find ways to win together. So uh, I don't know if Zillow go- intends to leverage this as like a way to get more agents to sign up with them, but probably wouldn't be the worst idea. Cool. You heard it here first. Double down. It's <laughs> exactly what Kyle said. Double down. I'm just Double kidding. down in a recession all day long. Cool. Well, hopefully you guys got some value out of the show today. If you did, if you're watching on YouTube, hit that thumbs up button. Let them know. If you want more of our content, hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell. And if you're listening on a podcast platform, hook us up with a review. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit uh, hit the review button. Hook us up a little review. Let us know what your takeaway was from the episode today. Um, and if you want to uh, stay connected with us or you have a question for us, go to thewhistleway.com. Subscribe to the podcast and YouTube channel. Join our Facebook uh, private group that Brian mentioned. Join our email newsletter or our referral uh, list for those people that are moving out of California. And get 50% off on our Media Mayor Mastermind course where we teach you everything we've learned about creating video over the last eight years together, all at thewhistleway.com. And before we wrap today, we want to share something with you that we refer to as our Whistle Widget of the Week. This is something we utilize in our business. It saves us time, makes us more money, or just helps us have more fun. What do you got, Brian? This one was shared to me by one of our uh, team member members. Shout out to Spencer. He does a great job sharing things. Um, and it's a great way to kind of show step-by-step step how to do something. We call these our SOPs, our standard operating procedures. Um, and it kind of gets to be a pain in the ass when you're explaining it and you have to take a screenshot and then upload the screenshot. It's, it's a whole long process. Um, I think this is called, I don't know if it's called Scribe or Scribe How, but Scribe how.com um, is how you get to this. And basically, all you do is you run this little widget like you would on Chrome, like you would a, a Loom or anything else. Um, you just hit record, and then you do your actions, and then you hit stop, and it'll actually create um, a little step-by-step that says, first click this button, and it'll read. It said subscribe. Click subscribe. Then click this button. Then then hit this menu item, and it'll kind of explain it for you and show screenshots um, and what's great is you can edit the the descriptions, you can embed the um, the final item somewhere. Really pretty simple. Um, not without its glitches. It, it's still a little bit glitchy. I, I stopped recording and I wanted to add a couple more things to it and I wasn't able to do it. So it's not perfect. Um, there is a free version and a paid version. Um, but I was pretty impressed with it. Scribehow.com. Cool. Uh, the one I'm going to share, this is one I've been trying to find ways to make reels easily um, or just short form video in general easily. And with TikTok and Instagram and stuff, you can go in and pick a bunch of video clips and it'll attach music to it. And it, it says it's going to like sync it up and but it looks like shit like it's, <laughs> it's this just, is from the guy who's like, it's amazing. Yeah, I mean, it's cool, but it's not it's not dialed in. And so there's a, a new app that I found that is amazing where people can go in and they can create templates and they can take a song and then they can set it like uh, show this video for 1.2 seconds and then this you know photo for 0.6 seconds and this for 1.8 seconds like there's people who've gone in and like figured out the timing of all of this stuff and there's all these templates that are already made so you just go on there find the template you want it'll tell you how long the video is going to be and how many clips or photos you need to add in and you just put them, drop them in, and now you have these videos that are just straight bangers where the the visual and the audio are perfectly synced up, where it just has like a lot of energy and a, the the transitions are like right on point. It makes you look like a total badass. It makes it look like you've spent hours and hours making these short form videos when in reality you spent less than a minute. Um, and that app is called Video Leap. Um, and it's a paid app. You know, they'll give you a trial for like a week and they'll start billing you. But even when you start paying, it's like $3 a month or something. It's so cheap. It's like cheap. nine bucks a month. Is it nine? It's worth it. Whatever. Or you can pay, pay like 65 bucks a year or 150 bucks for a lifetime. Yeah, it's it's freaking money. Like go on my Instagram at Kyle Whistle. I put a few up on there. My trip to Montana. I put a property on there over the weekend. Like the straight fire. So good. So video leap. Check that out. Cool, cool. All right, guys. Well, hopefully you got a lot of value out of the show today. Again, I'm Kyle Whistle with eXp Realty in San Diego. I'm Brian Kochi. We'll see you next week. Later, guys. Wait, wait. Before you leave, I want to share some more tips and tricks that we're using in our business to take it to that next level. Just click right here. And don't forget to subscribe. Click right here.